coming back to school with me We could done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm your host on Teaching with Board Games. Here today to take a look at Push Your Luck. Now, normally when I'm doing a video, I will at the start when I mention the title, also mention the publisher. And if a keen observer keen, would have seen that uh, I didn't in this case, uh, that's because Push Your Luck. I don't know that it, it never. I don't know if it's ever been published um, in any kind of format or whatever. But I mean, it's just it's a simple game that I learned somewhere along the lines, and um, it's something I use in my probability class. And just as sort of a little um, sneak peek, this is actually leading into that very thing, my probability class. As I, after I've uh, done this video for the Push Your Luck, my next one is going to be about um, how, does, how I set up my grade five probability class, because the Push Your Luck is an important one with that. But I'm not gonna to get too ahead of myself here. I'm gonna first take it to the table and show you how the game is played. So when playing a game of push your luck, the, um, all you're going to need is you're going to need um, a set of dice. So if I'm using six-sided dice, then I'm going to be needing six six-sided dice. Now, I say six-sided dice because uh, you, you, you can use other things as well. I mean, if you're gonna use eight-sided dice, you can use eight eight-sided dice, 10 10-sided dice, 12 12-sided dice. Um, and if I, I throw this in you too, it's just as an idea that if you want to you know, because having the the pips for people to count on the, each dice face, but you know, as an added thing, you know, just to a little extra challenge or whatever, just have numbers mixed with it, or or not, if it's going to help your students to have the numbers as opposed to the pips, it's just one thing to consider that dice do also come with numerals as opposed to the pips. All right, so let's get those ones out of the way. And what you're going to need also is just a piece of goose paper, G O O S, good on one side. This is just something that we don't need anymore and you're going to get a little scoreboard ready for, so let's say this is a five player game. So if there's me, Thompson Wood, and then players uh, two, three, four, and five. And so if I'm starting off the game, I have my six dice and I can roll as few or as many as I want. Now, if I'm choosing to roll one say as i'm not limited to that i can roll one more afterwards if i wish if i roll all six then it's, it is what it is but the thing is is i'm getting points for whatever the numbers are except if i roll doubles on any of them so if i all of a sudden roll six it's very dangerous um already i have two twos well that's actually not bad look at that one two three four five if that was just a six i could have had the maximum points but I didn't, I have two twos, so I don't get any points at all. So I've lost, right? So the next player goes and let's say they roll two dice. They get a four and a two. So now they've rolled two dice and they're getting six points currently because those are not doubles. But they said, I am going to push my luck, name of the game. And so they roll another dice and it's a one. Now it's seven points. So they thought, you know what? Fine, I'll stop there. Next person, they're going to try two dice and they roll double sixes. Right off the bat, doubles, they're out. Not out, but they don't get any points person rolls two, 10 points. Yes, please, I will stop there. And then this person goes, double fours, bad luck. So, and it goes on and on, like so, and maybe this time I roll a five, I'm just going to do that. And this is sometimes something I'll do with my students is I'll roll one dice, and I'll always just take the one, and they'll say, see if they catch on to the idea that by rolling one dice, in terms of probability, it makes it impossible to get doubles because you're only rolling one. You can't have doubles when you're only rolling one dice. So I'm always going to be increasing my score whereas some people are going to be going for those higher points, but ultimately sometimes getting no points at all. I'll be guaranteed some points every turn. And you're going to go on and on. So let's say this person gets another 15 points next turn. They had a good round, so they're up to 22. This person gets eight, and this person gets an eight, and this person gets maybe just two points and stops there. I get maybe 12 points next time because I, well, actually, we'll go, uh, say four points, nine, and so on. So once we get up to, one person gets up to 100 points. Let's say this person gets up to 105 with their last roll, we have to 105. So they've broken the 100 threshold. And let's say I was up to 45, and this person's up to uh, 96, and this person's up to 88, and this person's up to uh, uh, 70, 
56. Let's see. Okay, so for me, I'm out. There's no way in one roll that I can get over 105, so I am out of the game. 96, however, they have a chance. They just have to get 10 points or more, and they will then beat that score. So once one person's gone over, everybody else gets one more chance to roll over the thing. Now, so this person will then start off, so take think 10, they've done it. So they're at 106. So they're now the winners unless this person, you know, like 76 isn't going to be able to do it. So they're also out. So 86, so they're going, they're going to, let's just start off with three dice, see what they get. So they get, no, double threes, that's it. So 106 would be the winner in this case. And that's it. I mean, the, the game goes up to 100 points or 50 points or whatever you say it is. I mean, for me, I've always said 100 points, but I also sometimes end it early because, I don't know, maybe we had a fire drill or maybe in the explanation, we didn't have enough time or just set up or whatever. Thing, you know, we will play to the end of the period too. So in that case, whoever had the highest score is the winner. And that is it. I mean, the whole idea is, you know, how much do you want to push that luck? Students are developing strategies. So if I'm rolling two dice and I roll a one and a two, well, what's the point of stopping there? I mean, if I go keep pushing my luck, I mean, the worst that's gonna happen is that I'm going to lose three points, big deal. Even if I roll a three, hey, I've just doubled my points, right? Even at that, at uh, a mere six points on three dice, I'm, I'm probably still going to go and try. I mean, okay, I, I, lost, I lost six points, no big deal. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, you're developing strategies, the addition skills, the probability lessons that can be pulled out of this. It's just, um, it's a wonderful introductory lesson and activity into probability as a concept. And that is push your luck. All right, so now we've seen the game, the report card. So I'm looking at the report card for Push Your Luck. I'm going to give the number of players an A. I give it the A because while the game plays two to six players, which is normally from that B plus range, but I mean, the fact that it's so easy to increase the numbers by just adding more dice to your class, it's not really limited in the same way as a regular game. Like if I had another game, like say City of Zombies, I need multiple copies of the game in order to play. Um, and this one is just, it's very easy to gain dice. So, I mean, it's not difficult to even borrow dice from a colleague or something if you need more dice for your class or to even just go to the dollar store and buy some sets of dice. Uh, so, I mean, well, yes, it only plays two to six and that's normally my B plus range because it's, it's really so easy to just accommodate and to have for multiple groups in the class, I put it up to the A. For learning, I'm going to give it a B plus. I think that the um, there's a lot of good learning that happens in the game. For starters, just the simple addition that you're doing, that you can be, uh, you know, just by adding the numbers as you're going. And I, I, it was funny when I was doing it in my class this time. It was the first time I'd seen them do it. They were on. They were, they were doing running tallies, and I discouraged that. I wanted them to do the addition. So if they got eight points, put the eight, and then, you know, when they get another, say they get twelve points next time, scratch out the eight, put the twenty. You know, have that running total. It just helps with their addition. Plus, you know, just look at the, the dice and the numbers to know what the, you know, adding those numbers up. Um, I'm sometimes surprised when I see other adults who are playing games using dice and they'll roll two dice and they'll see like a six on one and they just recognize it. It's just that automatic recognition. Um, I forget the term for it now, but there's that term where you just see and you know what it is. But then there's a three on another one, so it'll go six, seven, eight, nine. I count the three pips on the next one up as opposed to just the simple addition like I, I think a lot of other gamers just can look at the two dice and just know just by looking at them what they are just because that's what they are you know it's that quick addition we've seen them enough times that we make that kind of association but anyway so by doing this the kids can get that kind of thing but just that, that addition and um then also just learning the probabilities and, and starting to see, and you can start to, you can, there's a lot you can do with it too, beyond the, the, the basics here. Start to look at the fact that like, when you roll you know, one dice, then the probability of getting doubles, what's the probability of that? You can look at that in, in fractions, which is one in six, or you can look at it as percentages. Uh, and then what's the probability of rolling a double with when you roll three dice? And it's, you know, um, so, and just exploring all of those things and the statistics and the probabilities and the fraction and just and showing how that all works because it's amazing how it changes as more dice are added into the mix. So it's, it's really kind of worth that exploration and it's, it's a great launching point. 
for it. And I mean, as a use in the classroom too, it's very adaptable because it's so easy that you can get and so accessible with the, the you know, being just dice that you can get the whole class doing it. And it just gives you that um, activity to you know, get them going while you're maybe doing some other things with another group. Right? For fun, I'm going to give it an A. Um, I just, every time I play it, the kids absolutely love this game. Even after we have gone past the probability unit, they are still asking to play it in their free time. They want to play it. Um, so that's a really good sign and that uh, for this kind of thing, you know, where you're playing a game and, you know, sometimes the kids are like, oh, well, I'm playing this game, but it's just, it's just math. I'm like, well, yes, it's math. Would you rather do a math game or would you rather do a math worksheet? You know, Oh, of course they choose the math game. But in this one, they even want to play it in their free time. And it's just, you know, the excitement and the uh, the discussion, they're still talking about it afterwards. And it, it just, it creates a love and interest in it. And that's great. And that's the kind of thing I really want because that's what's then going to encourage them to keep playing and keep learning. And that's, that's ultimately what I'm all about. So A for me. For time, I'm going to give it an A. The game is incredibly easy to set up. I mean, you just have to make sure that you're getting, you know, um, it would just be the setup ahead of time when you're doing class-wide. I mean, for one group, it's very easy to just grab six dice. But if you're in my situation where I'm looking at like for, for groups and, and the class-wide, then I have to make sure I have enough dice for in, and set them aside in groups of six dice for each uh, group that I'm going to be using the, the game with. Um, and then clean up, I just throw it back into the dice bin so incredibly quick that way. But what's also very nice is that it, um, it, it's, while I say the game goes up to 100 points, there's no reason that it has to go up to 100 points. Uh, we just, we can play until the time runs out because, you know, who knows, maybe sometimes the kids are just pushing their luck too much and nobody's getting any points. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's just incredibly flexible in that way. And I like it for that. You know, I like those games where it doesn't have to come to some kind of logical conclusion. If we're running out of time or if something happens, we can just say, you know, okay, the game's here. Whoever had the most points at this point is the is the is the winner. For cost, A plus. You know, it's it's so cheap. Uh, you know, I I thinking back to when I've seen dice in the dollar store, like how much they cost for like a set of just plain dice. I think, you know, like like a dollar, dollar twenty five, maybe two dollars at most. But again, like I'm not trying to think like you get like six dice, nine dice, like how many dice you get in a pack. It's it's cheap. And you'll often find a lot of classrooms have dice already. Um, I wouldn't I would not recommend taking them out of other board games and then trying to remember to put them back because that's a great way to lose the dice for those games and then you go to play the game and can't find the dice and then it's all like it's just downhill so have sets of dice aside for that like uh, i have a set of uh, i have a bin a plastic tub in my classroom full of dice and that's uh what we use and i just set them aside for that so if you are looking for something for your classroom which is an incredibly quick and easy probability lesson game to be using or just as a fun activity for the kids to be doing and you know the learning will happen whether or not you, you explicitly teach the probability uh, concepts to them uh, following like I to me like I just have them play it at first and then we go into the discussions of it afterwards we can start talking about the probabilities and things like that and we can start showing and you know once they have had that game in their mind the, uh, we can start to apply the understanding on top of that game knowledge. And that's what I find very helpful. So as I say this, um, as I'm going to be going into my next video about the, uh, how I set up my grade five probability program, this is the one that leads it all off. I have the whole class playing this because it's so easy to teach and, and they can just be very independent playing it. It's a very simple game. And then from there, I can then start teaching other groups, other games, and kind of cycle through the groupings. And I keep the groupings consistent through the time that we're doing the probability thing. I don't mix it up every day because I want to make sure that I'm having opportunities to meet with all the kids to teach them these different games. So, um, yeah, I think in any way you want to do it, whether it's a fun game, a probability game, um, and even in, in terms of whether you're looking at juniors um, or I don't know the, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily suggest with the primaries, but, you know, intermediate, like the, the junior high or even high school, you know, and you could just, you know, the, the, there's more you can do with this, you know, depending on the level that you're teaching at, you can certainly tailor some of the lessons to the probabilities, percentages, you know, graphing, scaling, you know, do all these different things with it to show how it works differently.
All right, so that's going to be it for today's episode. And if you have any ideas for things you'd like to see on the channel, if you have any questions about how I'm doing things in my classroom, what kinds of gains I'm incorporating, anything like that, uh, any ideas you have, please let me know. It helps me to give you relevant content, and that's what I'm all about. I want to be a, a useful resource. All right, so until next time, I'm Craig Thompson Wood, your host on Teaching with Board Games, saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school with me?